Welcome everybody to Go Local Live. I'm Josh Fenton, CEO and co-founder. I want to thank Dr. Mark Sigmund from Brown Urology for joining us earlier today, uh, talking about this month being Men's Health Month and the opportunity to connect via telemedicine. Uh, Governor Raimondo, just on the scheduling side, does not have a press conference today. She no longer has press events on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, but let's go to Dr. Michael Fine, former director of health in the state of Rhode Island. Dr. Fine, thanks so much for joining us. Always good to be here, Josh. And it's Thursday. Which is and it the is day Thursday. Right. <laughs> it is Thursday. Although in the news business, they all look exactly the same nowadays. Um, uh, let's go to um, uh, numbers coming out of Harvard, their World Health Initiative, uh, pronouncing that uh, they expect the total number of deaths to rise uh, by approximately 100,000 by September. Uh, that number sent a little bit of shockwaves uh, through uh, the media world this morning. Uh, but if you really look at the math, we're at about 115,000 right now. Number of deaths is 800 on the low side to about 1,200 per day. Uh, not far off. What do those numbers mean to you, sir? Uh, I think that's not unrealistic. Um, you know, remembering that, you know, predictions for tomorrow are usually okay, and after that they're a little tricky. Um, but if the number of new cases remains at 20,000 a day in the United States, then I think that number of deaths is unfortunately where we're going to get. And then the question becomes, uh, what happens if we get a second peak in the late fall? I mean, a second peak could march those numbers up, double them, or even triple them over the course of a year. Yeah, very, very disturbing numbers. Um, uh, we are starting to see some, a number of states, I think it's around 14, that are seeing significant increases in new cases. Uh, some of those are bigger states. I want to say Arizona, day before yesterday, had 1,200 new cases. I think the largest number of new cases in Rhode Island was around 400. Uh, California is seeing significant increases. Texas is seeing significant increases. Um, and then in the northeast, it's more quieter. Uh, yesterday's numbers were good here in Rhode Island. Today's are less good. Uh, what do we make of all these numbers crisscrossing across the country? Well, um, the, the disease is still bubbling up around the country. Um, you know, in, in states that have opened, in states that haven't been hit badly yet, clearly there's plenty of disease, and uh, it isn't done yet. Um, we're actually doing uh, very well in Rhode Island, um, and, you know, I'm looking closely at the numbers in Central Falls and Pawtucket, where we're doing, I think, even better yet, um, much to my uh, pleasure. But um, we have a long way to go um, before we have this disease locked down. Um, Governor Raimondo announced that uh, the goal is on August 31st, schools will reopen. Seems pretty adamant about that. Sent, I don't know if shock waves are, is the right term, but certainly surprise. Um, uh, there were very little details. Uh, school systems around the state will submit plans to achieve this. Uh, she did say, the governor did say, that it will look different, smaller classrooms, desks spread out, more cleaning, um, maybe less kids on buses. Not sure how that's going to work. Um, but your thoughts on an August 31st reopen date for Rhode Island's public schools? Well, the good news is I don't have to run a school, so I have no idea what it's going to be like to prep for that. I'm hoping that there will be uh, epidemiologists made available to school systems um, to help design this approach so that the design makes scientific sense. Uh, you know, schools are, uh, are classically the incubators of disease. You know, we are used to thinking and saying that six-year-olds transmit the flu um, from, to each other. Um, they uh, create the epidemic at school, and then they bring it home to their parents and grandparents. And what is yet to be seen uh, is if that's going to happen with coronavirus as well. There is some risk of that, but I think 
you know, it's reasonable and intelligent uh, to try an opening, test as you go, watch your numbers. And, you know, if you have to close, you have to close. But kids need an education. And the thing that's that, that we ought not do is sacrifice the future of our children um, for this difficult disease, which mostly strikes people who are older. We've got to make sure we get those kids taken care of. Um, and they are not at huge risk from this disease. So I think opening uh, thoughtfully and carefully uh, makes sense, making sure that we check as we go. Uh, Wall Street Journal had a piece yesterday, I believe, that said online learning uh, from the data appears to be a colossal failure. It did not work. It does not work uh, as it had hoped to be. Uh, Depending on the day, the governor says it was either a wild success or less than a wild success. Uh, talking to parents, educators, and principals, uh, as Go Local has over the past few months, there is, there is no, none of those categories have said much positive about their experience. I think it's incredibly difficult and that there wasn't the tools in place to be able to make it successful. Um, uh, we're going back to school one way or the other. Uh, I think the sense is we cannot lose another year of education and the development of a lot of these kids. What can we do to make sure that it is fair, that the, the experience in Barrington is the same as it is in Central Falls? I think that's all about public investment. I mean, you know, if you're going to get uh, kids working in small schools, you need to have teachers. Um, and, you know, you need to have, or if you're going to get kids in small classes, those small classes need teachers, and the teachers in Central Falls and Pawtucket need to be language competent in at least one extra, maybe two extra languages. You know, either you make the investment or you don't. I heard a story yesterday about Barrington getting a new school, which I'm sure it needs, uh, but I think we're going to have to put time, energy, attention, and dollars um, into the places of greatest need. And that existed before this uh, pandemic. And it's certainly this, the pandemic did nothing but make this disparity worse. Um, let's, go, uh, let's go to the numbers. Uh, the state numbers are out. Deaths back up again uh, into double digits. Uh, I think it was a low of yesterday of four back up to 11 today. Can you take us through the numbers and talk specifically about the number of deaths which just seem to be uh, j just uh, as sad as sad can be here in Rhode Island? Sure. Uh, well, let's, let's uh, do the world numbers first and then come around to local. Uh, around the world, 7,500,000 uh, cases, almost 4 million recoveries. Uh, we're going up around the world at 137,000 new cases a day. That's something we got to keep our eye on. Uh, deaths around the world, four, 420,000 ish, going up 5,000 a day. That's been stable. In the United States, 2 million, 69,000 uh, cases going up at 20,000 a day, and 115,000 uh, deaths going up at about 1,000 a day. In Rhode Island, uh, 15,862 cases, 11 deaths overnight, uh, 823 deaths altogether, 102 new cases, and our hospitalizations are pretty stable, but way lower than they were. In terms of day-over-day -day deaths, one day is, is one day's experience is unfortunately just one day's. I think you got to look at the trajectory of this, and the trajectory is some stability about 10 to 15 deaths a day. And I think that's what we can expect. Uh, we had a, a couple of days of, of fewer new cases. That's a good thing. A little more new cases today, but more testing in the last 24 hours. Um, so let's see what happens over the course of a week. We still are not getting day over day, city by city numbers, um, which makes life difficult uh, to try to think through how cities and towns are doing. So if we take that model that it's about 10 deaths per day, play it out over the next, uh, the rest of the summer, 
we're looking at about uh, 800 more deaths. I think that's right. Um, so we would be going into the fall. Yeah. Uh, um, a, a sad, sad toll. A sad, sad toll. Um, and, you know, I mean, I, 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 once the virus got loose and spread widely, I don't know how much of this was preventable. And that's the hard bit. You know, the, 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 the thing to do is to say, OK, it's a heartbreak. The virus got loose. Now let's make sure that everybody who gets sick gets access to care. I think we've done pretty well at that over the last month after a slow start. Um, I don't think things in nursing homes are going to get much better. I think it has to run its course in nursing homes at this point um, because, you know, and that's where 75 percent of our deaths are. We just don't have what we need to functionally or fundamentally change what nursing homes do at this point. Uh, are we going to run into a problem, not only the other potential risks in the fall, but taking, you know, one of the benefits of, of what we've just experienced and going into the summer is we've been able to achieve some level of social distancing by closing down schools, workplaces, restaurants, bars, sporting events, et cetera. But if we're going to bring children back in, uh, while children may not be at significant risk, low, low, low level of risk, the faculty uh, of these schools uh, many of them are in their 50s and 60s, and even some still teaching in public schools are in their 70s. Are we running a significant risk of uh, creating a new wave just via the schools? Uh, I thought we, I think we are running a risk of that anytime we open the schools. The schools are a petri dish. That's where you culture, that's, it's a perfect place to spread, spread viruses. The problem isn't is that possibly going to happen? The problem is, what are the reasonable alternatives? I mean, you know, in a different world, maybe we ought to say nobody over 50 should be teaching. Um, my guess is that folks who are teaching wouldn't be happy with that. Um, but to a certain extent, I think everybody, they are Americans like the rest of us, and we all kind of want to have our cake and eat it. We want to be active and working, and we want to be safe at the same time. Not sure that those are going to be perfectly achievable together. Uh, Dr. Fine, uh, yesterday there was a, a photo posted by Vice President Pence. He had an appearance at the Trump headquarters. Um, there was 200 uh, campaign workers, mostly young, looked to be 20s and 30-year-olds. He was in front of them. They were in close quarters, kind of jammed together like a crowd not a one wearing a mask, nor was the vice president wearing a mask. Um, you know, these political uh, demonstrations, these political activities by our leaders, the governor on Friday night, the vice president yesterday, uh, is it, you know, like the science being so inconsistent and often wrong by the most trusted uh, health organizations in the world and in the country, uh, are we just doomed to failure because of mixed messaging by our, our elected leaders? I think we're kind of doomed to culture wars. Um, you know, I can't tell how much failure we're doomed to. Remember, remember the vice president is getting tested every day. Um, and if he's standing before a bunch of people who are mostly white and mostly people from rural areas, then it's unlikely he's actually at significant risk. The messaging is complicated because that says one group of people ought to do one thing and another group of people ought to do another thing. You know, again, I don't I, know. I, I will say this. The front row that you, was most visible uh, was racially diverse at the, at the Trump event. Um, I doubt any of them are rural. as a, it's, it's the political headquarters in Washington, D.C., they're probably all working and living in Washington area. But, you know, whether it's, for whatever their purpose is, Raimondo at a protest, Pence at a campaign rally, for the average person just trying to live a healthy life and work their way through this virus, it's very difficult to understand what the behavior that they should be following. 
Well, I think it's pretty clear that everybody should mask right now. And what people choose to do, you know, I mean, in the political world, in the public process, you know, I'd rather everybody just cho chose to mask and get it over with and recognize that this just isn't a big deal. Um, Let's you know, just wear a mask and get on with it, right? Yeah. You know, it's at the, the end best, of the best day, science. This, you know, I've talked before about uh, uh, FDR's Four Freedoms. This doesn't seem, the, the freedom to mask or not mask doesn't seem to be fundamental to the existence of the democratic process in the United States. You know, as far as I'm concerned, it's a small thing. You, you use an abundance of caution approach. Um, it can't hurt. And the evidence now says it likely helps. Why the heck not? Yeah, um, absolutely. I, there are people who are going to want to make, you know, sort of, sort of live and die on this issue, and it seems like the smallest of the things that we have to confront. We ought to be able to just mask and go on to the next thing from my perspective, but I don't live in Texas. Right. Uh, Dr. Fine, you always get the last word. What's the last word? I think we ought to keep doing everything we can to nail this thing, to get rid of it in Rhode Island. I think if we uh, we, we turn up our game some. I think we can make it gone here, um, and I think we should. Um, I think there's one level of commitment that we haven't developed yet, but I think we can do this, and I think we can do this together. And if we do it together, we can even do it soon. Dr. Michael Fine, thank you so much. Great overview of all the things that are developing on the coronavirus, uh, from reports from Harvard to new data from around the world. For everyone else, uh, thanks so much. Stay tuned to some updates uh, going live in the next uh, probably hour, hour and a half on Go Local on a number of, of issues. Uh, for everyone else, please, please stay safe. Thanks very much, Josh.